As a child who grew up in the 70s, I also enjoyed watching the great movie from Charlie Chaplin. They had no voice and no colors, but they were full of joy. And I remember in particular the movie Modern Times. This is when Charlie was standing next to the machine, augmenting it with small repeated tasks all day long in an ever-growing pace. And more particularly, I remember the moment when Charlie wanted to go for a lunch break and he was handing the tool to his colleague, and then all his buddies started to shake in a very, very funny way. One day I was watching this movie with my dad. My dad was an engineer in one of those factories. They were assembling communication devices. And my dad told me that this movie is actually not very funny. It actually showed the implication of the second industrial revolution on the employees in this factory. Those body shakes that I was laughing a lot, a lot, Actually, it indicates on a complete collapse of the nerve system of Charlie. Well, I was a child. I didn't understand all of that. I was keep laughing watching these movies. One day, I joined my dad to his factory because I really want to see how this thing looks in real life. And I remember the moment when we entered the manufacturing floor and there were dozens of people standing there doing small repeated tasks, assembling the communication devices, and pushing them for the machine for packaging and shipment. And I was looking at these people and thinking, so how is their life look like? Are they all going to shake when they're going to go to lunch break? Are they really happy doing this task again and again every day? I was really worried. However, my dad was quite happy. He wanted to show me the new factory he just built. A new factory, I said, more people like this. So the other day we went to the other factory and I remember the moment, my dad opened the door and I saw dozens of robots everywhere. The robots were busy working, assembling those communication devices very accurately, very precisely, and it was quite an amazing thing. But then I thought, so what does it mean for the people from the other factory? Are they all going to resist to this kind of uh, manufacturing? Are they all going to strike? Are they going to have financial problems? Are they also going to lose their jobs because of these robots? Apparently, I wasn't the only person asking these kind of questions. A lot of people in the industry worried from automation and robotics. And many studies on the way uh, educate us that actually it did just good for our economy. Yes, you need less people to stand and do small repeated tasks again and again. But you need more salespeople to sell the robots, and you need more engineers to design the robots, and you need more support people to support the robots. So it is actually just a shift in the required skill set in the market. There was no decline in the number of uh, jobs that the market needed. And for those companies who adopted this kind of a change, those countries who embraced this kind of revolution, they are actually the ones who benefit the most. They've seen an increase in productivity. They've seen an increase in the GDP. Unlike other countries, countries that had to fight against unions, countries that didn't understand that this is something good, these are the ones that actually lost the jobs. These are the ones that actually work from their country, move to other countries who become more modern and more efficient. Having all this information, when I had to choose what to learn in university, for me it was quite obvious to go and learn industrial engineering because modern manufacturing is really what I like. I have a family of a lot, many engineers, industrial engineering, uh, electrical engineering, construction engineering. But for me, industrial engineering was the preferred uh, job. So I started my studies, and pretty early, everyone started to talk about the next revolution that is coming. A big change is going to happen in the market. You don't need to go to a retail store anymore. Everything you can buy online. You don't need to go to, saw, to see the doctor in the clinic. You can actually talk over the video. I look at that and think, well, I don't really know what it is, but if this is something really big, I better learn that and actually be ready when the world is going to move to this world. So I added to my studies a degree in information system and computer science, and that obviously turned to be the internet the way we know it today. Four years after, after I graduated, I joined Intel. For me, Intel was a perfect combination for modern manufacturing and technology. And the first day I came to Intel, I remember the moment. I look at the floor and it looks like this. Once again, dozens of people in front of a machine 
augmenting it with small repeated tasks all day long. This time it was with data. This time they were looking on the chart that goes up and the chart that goes down and trying to explain the meaning of what happened when these two charts are intersecting. I'll look at that and say, oh, that's, that's of course looks familiar from the days of Charlie and the manufacturing. So how this is going to evolve? How automation going to apply to this kind of people, to the data revolution? Today everyone is talking about artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? What exactly does it mean for us? We as humans were probably not the strongest in this universe. We are probably not the fastest in this universe. But most likely we are the most intelligent in this universe. So if someone can really create artificial intelligence, what does it mean for us? If you ask the leaders of the world, the political leaders will tell you, well, if you're going to own that, you can control the whole world. Well, that's the political view of that. But if you ask the tech leaders of the world, they will start to scare you and tell you we need to be very careful with this type of technologies. So a recent study actually put that into a test and actually tried to evaluate what is the IQ level of these algorithms comparing to humans. And the results are quite amazing. They evaluated the technology from Google, from Microsoft, from Apple, where billions of dollars have been invested in artificial intelligence. And the results are amazing because we can see that the IQ level of these algorithms are still below a six-year-old child. And even if they will continue to develop, and even if there will be a breakthrough, and they will need a couple of breakthroughs to have a big progress, still there is a way to go to reach the IQ level of 18 years old person. So are we really scared from that? Do we really think any 18 year old person can rule the world? I truly believe that artificial intelligence at this stage, it's, it's a very, very early stage and there's still a way, a long way to go. And this is where we are today with artificial intelligence and we better call it different. AI for me is not artificial intelligence. It's more likely augmented intelligence. This is where the first time where the machine will augment the human rather than the human augment the machine with extra tasks. Augmented intelligence is what's going to add a lot of productivity to our environment. And yes, there will be a couple of occupations where this is going to be completely automated. They will be completely automated by these type of algorithms. But it's going to be just below 5%. For about 60% of the occupation, augmented intelligence will be able to automate 30% of the work. Imagine 30% of your work can be automated. In an average weekday, it means you're going to have one and a half days available for you. So you can go further and learn something new. You can be more productive. Or you can go and have some rest and release all the stress from the busy days that we all have. Augmented intelligence will have a lot of benefits for our markets and industry. And we will really look on each and every industry. The contribution to the growth of them can be phenomenal. Let's take, for example, healthcare. Doctors are spending 10 years just learning medicine, but then end up 70% of the time meeting patients and running diagnosis instead of doing research. We can take that part and give it to augmented intelligence, doing all the diagnostics and giving the doctor more time to do research, finding a cure for the cancer. Same for the automotive. We all know about autonomous car, but imagine I can have a business with tracks all around this uh, continent without having a single driver, and it will be a very successful business. Or for education. Professors are in university teaching their students year after year the same topic. Expect all students to have this, uh, the same progress and pass the exams. Augmented intelligence can actually tailor the, the process for each of the students and make sure they are progressing in their own pace. But then release the time for the professor to go and do more research and find more interesting topics and innovation for their students. They're going to be a great contribution in each of the markets. And overall, for countries and industry that will adopt and embrace augmented intelligence, they will see an increase in GDP. They will see more benefit for their environment. We will have a better life having those kind of innovations. And I truly believe that the augmented workforce of the future will be a perfect combination between AI and human each focusing on what they know to do best and together working for a better life and a better economy. So remember, next time when someone asks you about AI, ask yourself a question. What would you do with an extra one and a half days a week? Thank you very much.